Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Y'all, let's do some more simple and fun crafting for Valentine's Day. Stay tuned. So in a previous video, we made this super, super easy folio to hold a Valentine's card. So simple. And when you open it up, you have a place here that you can place your heavily embellished Valentine's card. And you might be able to tuck in a few sweets as well. And then we topped it off with a super simple, super sweet card. So today we're going to keep that theme going where we're going to make boxes and cards. And the whole purpose of this box is so that if you do make a card that has heavy embellishments on it, you don't have to try to stuff it inside of an envelope. You can actually place it in its own box and again, you could play some sweets or a gift card or anything else along with the card you made in the box. So this is so, so pretty, so feminine. And on today's card, I'm going to go in a slightly different direction just to give it more of a masculine feel, but it'll still have that Valentine's look to it. So y'all know what time it is. It is time to get started. All right, guys, here's the beautiful project that we're going to be making today. We're going to be making the card as well as the card box. Now I will be using more masculine papers as I said, but we're still going to have something oh so beautiful. And so here is what we're going to need. We're going to need a card base that measures seven by seven and you can use a heavyweight or a medium weight card stock for this. I'm actually using the Dollar Tree white poster board. Then I have two pieces that measure three and a quarter by six and three quarters. And then we're going to need a piece that measures nine and a half by 12. On the nine and a half inch side, I'm going to score this at one and I'll flip it over to the opposite nine and a half inch side and score at one again. Then I'm going to place it in my scoreboard on the 12 inch side and we're going to score this at three and three quarters. At four and three quarters at eight and a half and at nine and a half. And then I'll take my scoreboard and put it away. So I am going to bring in my big old spatula and we're going to fold and burnish all of our scores. And this is a double-sided paper, so I could have gone with either side of this to get that more masculine look. But I am going to go with this side So now that I have all of my scores folded and burnished, we are going to go to the end that we scored at three and three quarters. That's actually the front of our box. And we are going to go to these tabs here and just release them. So I'm going to go up to the score mark. And when I say go up to the score mark, I mean just that. Go up to the score mark, don't go through it, and then just cut straight down the middle of that score mark. And then we are going to angle a little bit to reduce this. And then I'm going to trim away just a little bit of that. We'll come over to this side and we're going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to go up to the score mark and drag down to reduce my tabs. And then I'll angle in. And then I'm just going to reduce this a little bit. And then you see these little pieces here? I'm just going to brush them off into my table side waste paper bin that we made in a previous video. So now that we have it like this, we are going to have one fold here, one fold here. We're going to take our X-Acto knife, finger blade, whatever it is you're using to cut with, and then we're going to come to the second score mark here and we're just going to angle out this way. Come over to this side, do the same thing. Go to that second one and cut. And then I'm just going to angle in a little bit on that. And then I'm going to take my tape runner and I'm just going to place tape on these pieces here and we will fold them in. I'll use my big old spatula to 
just to get that stuck. And then I'll fold it up just a little bit. And then I'll come to this end and I'm going to close mine with a magnet. You can use Velcro on the outside, but I will be closing this with a magnet. So I am going to go ahead and take that magnet and just place it down. So I'm just going to put a little bit of my double stick tape there and we'll get that stuck. You can put that down with glue if you want. One thing that I would not recommend guys is if you are making these for a younger person, I would not use a magnet because as we all know, magnets, if ingested, are very, very toxic and harmful. So please make sure that if you're making any of my projects where I'm using a magnet, do not make that project with the magnet to be given to a very young person. Okay, so now I'm going to take my glue, place my glue on my flaps, And I'm going to bring that back up and get it stuck with the flap. And you'll know it's the back because it'll have that top flap piece on it. So let's just get that stuck. And I'll do the same thing here. We're going to get that matched and stuck. And then I'm just going to fold this back just a little bit. And I am going to take my glue, place my glue on this piece. And we'll take this piece. We're going to match it right here. And then I'll take my glue, place my glue on this piece. get it stuck and make sure that you're matching it so that the tops meet. And then you're going to have some scrap left. So I am going to take my scrap, place it in my scoreboard, and I'm going to trim two pieces that measure one inch. I'm not too concerned about how long these are. I just wanted to get two strips that were one inch. So I'm going to take these and bend them backwards, trying to get them matched. And then I'll take my piece and I'm just going to put it right here just to finish off that top. So I'm going to take my glue Place it in just like this. And then I'll get this nice and stuck. And that just gives us a nice finish to that top. And I'll do the same thing on this one. Placing some glue. I'll take this piece, place it right there. And now we have that cute little finish to the top of that. So our box is almost done, but I need a way to close it. And as you know, I'm closing it with a magnet, but I also want a decorative closure on the front of this box. So I'm using this beautiful starburst explosion piece from Anna Griffin, along with an Anna Griffin sticker that says, I adore you. So I am going to show you guys the Anna Griffin kit that I'm working from. This is the birthday kit, even though I'm using the elements for Valentine's Day. That's how interchangeable they are. But this is the kit. So you get all of these pieces, plus you get all of these card bases, five by seven card bases. Then you get the three by five pieces. You get so much with this kit. And then you get these gold pieces here that I believe were a part of this kit. I can't remember because I had actually taken this kit apart, but this is all of the goodies that you get in this kit. You get all of these birthday poppers. 
beautiful moons like that, hats, presents, cupcakes. You get so many different pieces in here. And I've said it before, sometimes when you look at these box kits on her website, they might give you sticker shock. But when you break it down and you're getting 240 plus pieces in a kit, and that kit may range from 50 to $70, there is no way that you're going to go to the store and find these quality pieces for less. And that is why I love buying the kits. I don't make cards with them. I buy the kits for the elements in them and I take those elements and use them in my paper crafting, which is exactly what we're about to do. And I don't know if you guys can hear any noise in the background. There's a big truck unloading outside. So hopefully you don't hear it. If you do, that is what that sound is. So I'm going to take this magnet, place it right there so that they can find the one underneath. Then I'm just going to take some glue, place my glue down, let that magnet find again. And then I'll take this piece and I'm going to place it on top of that magnet. So let me just lift that. I'm going to take this piece we're going to place it down on top of that magnet and we'll let that dry. And while it's drying, I'm going to take another piece from Anna Griffin, which is from the Valentine's box. And I believe this Valentine's box I'm using is about two years old. And this one simply says, I adore you. Now this is gorgeous. And I'm gonna keep saying it. You cannot go to the store and find pieces of this quality Look at that, for less than you're going to pay for that whole kit when you break it apart and you use the elements in your paper crafting. So I'm going to take this, set it to the side, bring in my scoreboard. We have a seven by seven inch piece. I'm going to place it in. We're going to score at three and a half. And then we'll just fold this. So now I'll bring in my two pieces that measure three and a quarter by six and three quarters. I am just going to place some tape on the back. Then I'll take this piece. I'm going to place it down. Flip it. And then I'll take this piece. We'll do the same thing. I'm simply going to place my tape. And I'm going to place this down on the back side. So now we have a pretty back to our card as well as a pretty front. So then I'm going to go back to my little Anna Griffin box and pull out one of these little flourishes. Isn't that pretty? And then I just want to place that on the inside. So I'm going to run just a little bit of glue on this. And we'll get it placed. And then we'll do the outside of our card and we'll be finished with this cutie. So I'm going to take that and just place it right there in the corner. So when the card is opened, you have that pretty element right there in the corner. Then you can write all types of beautiful things on the inside if you like. So I'm going to keep it simple, guys. I'm going to take this piece, which is going to tie in to the other piece, and I am just going to put some tape on the back. And we'll get it stuck. So I'm going to take this piece place it down, get it stuck. Then I'll take another one of the I Adore You stickers and then I'll place it down. And then we have a beautiful card set that is perfect for him, but it's also perfect for her. And if you have a friend who's not into the pinks and the flowers and the cutesy that goes with Valentine's Day, do something a little more subdued like this for them. It definitely is a happy Valentine's Day look. So again, that was very easy peasy crafting, but it was crafting with a purpose 
and look at the end result. Such a simple way to get something extremely upscale. All right, y'all, so we are finished. And wasn't that fun? Look at how simply gorgeous this box is. And then when you pair it with the matching card, and guys, it really is understated elegance. We take some beautiful cardstock, a few beautiful embellishments, and this is what we're able to create. We don't have to break the bank to have something unique and personal for our Valentine. I'm bringing them all in so that you can see the difference. We have the extremely feminine right here, which I absolutely love. And then we have a more subdued way to say Happy Valentine's Day that can go for him or her. If you really are looking for a fun way to dress up a Valentine's Day card for a man, go with some more subdued papers that have, that have the colors and the look of Valentine's without being so in your face valentine -y. So I hope that you have liked this project. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you in your positive spirit join this online crafting family. You guys, please be safe, be kind, Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.